The golden years of the Ottomans saw not only the expansion of an empire, but the rise of a society unlike any other. Get ready to delve into the wondrous architecture of the Ottomans and learn about one of the most famous Muslim architects in history. Next, on this episode of Islam in Anatolia. Expanding over three continents and leading the world in medicine, science, astrology and law, the Ottoman sultans flourished from their capital in the east. Istanbul, the seat of an empire that extended from Budapest to Baghdad, including Mecca into the far reaches of its territory, grew in size and population. The 16th century gave way to the Ottomans' richest period of wealth, land and prosperity. A golden age for the empire, it was during this period of peace and enlightenment that the Ottoman chief architect was a man named Sinan. Mimar Sinan is a very famous name and uh, indeed he deserves all his fame because he is the greatest of uh, the Muslim architects and um, actually his uh, full designation would be Mimar Koja Sinan and Mimar is actually the Turkish word for architect so literally his name is uh, architect Sinan, Mim uh, Mimar Sinan. Born into a Greek family he was the son of a Muslim convert. At a young age he was then taken into the Janissary army where he was trained and brought up for the life of an Ottoman soldier. It was among the fierce warriors of the Ottoman army that his education in military constructions would first begin. He took part in many military campaigns to Baghdad, to Cairo, and also to the European side, and to Persia, to Iran, and against the Safavids also. During that time, he was out, he became known because of his outstanding ability to build the bridges and also to make some kind of the roads and which was helping the army very very good in creating such kind of the in helping them through keen observation and a flair for engineering Sinan quickly rose in favor but how would a soldier in the Ottoman army become the greatest architect in the empire? Located in the Fatih district of Istanbul is one of the first and most important mosques built by Sinan. The Shehzade, completed in 1548, is one of the most splendid displays of Ottoman architecture in the city. Simple in design, yet an infrastructural masterpiece. Its size, decoration and architecture are outstanding. Shehzade in the Turkish language means prince, and as the name reveals, the Shehzade Mosque was actually built for the son of Sultan Suleiman, Prince Mehmed, who died at the early age of 22. The architect was Mima Sinan, but if you look at the structure, it was actually Sinan's second attempt at a semi-domed building. Surrounded by modest gardens and the tomb of Prince Mehmed, the mosque was Suleiman's way of celebrating the life of his lost son. Two towering minarets frame the building, and its interior is just as brilliant. Vast space, signature of Sinan's vision, opened the room under a towering dome and painted semi-domes. Decorations, 
retouched over the centuries, bring out the curve of the arches and accentuate the smaller details. It was this building that Sinan considered the final work of his architectural apprenticeship. In his uh, entire life's work, uh, he constructed about 360 buildings, or was the main architect for these 360 odd buildings, um, including about 80 plus mosques, uh, 50 plus uh, madrasas or uh, schools, and um, uh, other structures including um, uh, caravanserais um, and um, uh, seven bridges as well. In fact, uh, some very important bridges in the Ottoman Empire were built by uh, Mimar Sinan. Built on a perfect square, including a beautiful tomb for the late prince, the Shahzada Mosque is fairly modest in comparison to Sinan's later works. But beginning his career as an Ottoman soldier, how did he ascend the ranks, eventually achieving a new title? That, uh, after all the training, um, Sinan was um, uh, brought into the, um, uh, uh, into the uh, major campaigns under uh, the sultans and uh, from there he was able to gain the experience by observing and uh, being very close to the uh, various architectural traditions, uh, be they in, um, in the east or the west of uh, Istanbul. His fearless passion for engineering and an ability to create in critical circumstances earned him the right to journey on the Sultan's campaigns. Here, he would have the chance to prove himself once again. It was during one of these campaigns in Tehran and Baghdad that he was able to, despite having hardly any material, build three fully armed and equipped galleys that he then took command of. He was able to cross Lake Van into the enemy territory and actually gather information from the enemy forces on the opposite side. And it was because of this achievement that he was then promoted to Haseki of the Sultan's bodyguard. Sinan's unique achievements quickly earned him recognition. By the time he finished the Shahzade Mosque, Suleiman would once again call upon Sinan's incredible talent for a construction of his own. Stay tuned, next. Atop the third hill of Istanbul stands the Shahzade Mosque, built in memory of Sultan Suleiman's late son, Prince Mehmed. A work of Sinan's earlier years, the building's size and beauty exceeded all expectations. Its construction met with great celebration. It wasn't long before Sinan was once again called upon for a new project. After the completion and uh, the achievement of Shehzade Mos, Sultan Suleiman himself was very impressed and um, asked for uh, a mosque uh, that would honor uh, his reign, which uh, would become the Suleimanie Mosque, and indeed is one of the great masterpieces of um, uh, Sinan's work as well as of Ottoman architecture. Standing over an area of 3,100 square meters, the Suleimanie Mosque was the greatest of all of Sinan's masterpieces in Istanbul. Painting the Turkish skyline, its rounded dome and perfect minarets can be seen from every corner of the city. Taking three years to lay the foundations, the construction of the entire building lasted seven years. By 1557, Sinan's magnificent vision had finally come to life. But Sinan needed to challenge himself yet again. He would model this mosque after studying one of the most impressive works of architecture in Turkish history. The mosque has four minarets with ten balconies to signify that it was built by the 10th Ottoman Sultan, Suleiman. He wanted a mosque that sat atop one of the seven hills of Istanbul, 
a mosque that could surpass the great Hagia Sophia. And Sinan succeeded in doing just that. When Sinan was planning to build this mosque, he said to himself that I am going to build a mosque, but the dome should be exactly like Hagia Sophia's dome. He studied from life. By experience, he studied everything. Following a similar structure to the great Byzantine edifice, the dome stretches 27 meters, large, yet not quite reaching the size of Hagia Sophia's. But where it lacked in size, it made up for in grandeur. Seated atop one of Istanbul's hills, the Soleimaniye Mosque has become the most visually striking icon of the city. So what motivated Suleiman to create such a masterpiece? One night, Sultan Suleiman had a powerful dream, and when he woke up, he was so affected by the dream that he wanted to consult with his chief architect, Mima Sinan. They spoke, and he told him that he wanted to build a magnificent mosque that would stand until the Yam al Qiyamah. Sinan agreed, but his only concern was that, where would they build the mosque? But the Sultan said, I had a dream that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came to me and indicated that we should build the mosque in this exact position. So seven years later, the mihrab and the mimbar were erected in the same spot as Sultan Suleiman's dream. The mihrab is a colourful display of calligraphy and Ottoman tiles. Exquisitely pieced together to form an inspiring work of art, we can imagine the thousands of worshippers that have bowed their heads here in prayer. Outside, framed by 28 arches and roofed by small domes, the marble courtyard is wide and spacious, a clear fountain located at its centre. The mosque and courtyard sit on an area of similar size, together creating a rectangle of spectacular proportion. But Sinan was still determined to outdo himself. He would spend the next 10 years learning and preparing by involving himself in an array of new projects. After a decade, it would be under the instruction of another great sultan that Sinan would lend his skill. So which mosque has been hailed the crowning glory of Sinan's career? Find out after the break. With dozens of structures scattered throughout the city, Mima Sinan left a permanent mark on Istanbul. His touch of mastery culminated in the spectacular Suleymaniye Mosque, built between 1550 and 1557 for the Ottoman Sultan, Suleyman the Magnificent. But his skill was yet to be fully exemplified. Four and a half hours west of Istanbul is another city that was once the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Located near the Greek border, Edirne's colourful atmosphere was originally the Greek city of Hadrianopolis. But once in Ottoman hands, it slowly opened under Muslim influence, becoming an Islamic city in Europe. Edirne served as the Ottoman capital for as long as 90 years and was predominantly the city in which Sultan Mehmed al Fatih grew up in. Now I'm in the middle of the city and within a 500 meter radius of where I'm standing, there are three main mosques built by three different Ottoman sultans. But the jewel among them is a mosque built by the famous Ottoman architect Mimar Sinan, whose statue actually stands here in the middle of the city and whose mosque has been described as the masterpiece of his work, the famous Selimiye Mosque of Edirne. Situated on a small hill in the city centre, the Selimiye is the largest mosque in the country. It was during the construction of this building that Sinan would show off the extent of his creative capabilities, raising from the ground 
a monument that has been unmatched in history since its completion. From the outside, the building takes on a pyramid formation, its roof coming together in a rounded dome. Decorating the four corners of the building stand long, slender minarets. It was from these towering columns that the call to prayer was made every day. We're on one of the four minarets of the Selimia Mosque, standing at about 85 meters high. Now, as you can see, each of the minarets had three balconies, and during the Ottoman era, each of these balconies had one muazzin making the call for prayer simultaneously. That's 12 muazzins five times a day calling the adhan from this mosque alone. During the Ottoman era, it was only imperial mosques that were permitted to have four minarets. Standing in uniform around the central dome, they are all equal in height and built in perfect proportion to the edifice's main body. But the true masterpiece of the Selimia is the magnificent centerpiece that sits atop the building in bold statement. One is the Selimia Mosque in Edirne. This mosque is outstanding because of the, its dome. Dome exceeds 31 meters and there is no any other mosque in Ottoman Empire having such kind of big dome. It um, culminated in something that uh, Sinar had always wanted to do and that was to expand or to create something just slightly bigger than the Hagia Sophia or the Hagia Sophia um, Cathedral which in itself was a great achievement of course um, and with the Salimie Mosque he was just able to um, overcome or to um, uh, to go beyond uh, the size of the dome of the Hagia Sophia. With a diameter of over 31 meters and weighing up to 2,000 tons, the dome is by far the most breathtaking aspect of the mosque. Even from afar, the large dome and four minarets framed against the sky became the symbol of Adirna. From the inside, the view is equally as splendid. So he tried to make exactly like Hagia Sophia's dome. It's very big, very large one, but at the end he was able to make even bigger. And it becomes bigger than 31 meters in diameter. Sinan succeeded in positioning the dome directly over the main entrance, creating the magical effect of the ceiling rising overhead. The entrance also gave way to a single room whose vast hall once resonated with the voices of thousands of worshippers. But inside the mosque, there is a hidden feature, a small detail that shows us the compassionate nature of the mosque's architect. It was during the construction of the mosque that Muma Sinan's granddaughter passed away and in her honor, he built for her a tomb with the image of a tulip with its head hanging over in sadness. But while he was working on the mosque, his architects and master builders noticed that he was extremely saddened by this loss. So into the marble over here, they chiseled the image of a reverse tulip with its head hanging over like the image on her tomb. Chiseled here hundreds of years ago, the image still remains imprinted in the marble. The mihrab is a beautiful white design surrounded by dazzling Ottoman tiles. The blue colouring and long calligraphic images complement the building's exquisite design. The mimba, another finely chiseled work of marble, stands next to the mihrab. But how Sultan Selim originally envisioned the mimba is a little different to how we can see it today. When Sultan Selim originally commissioned for the construction of the mimba, he wanted the entire thing to be covered in gold. But Mimasanan said to him, there is greatness in simplicity. 
so only parts of it were covered in gold. And this actually turned out to be quite a foresight, as the Dirna was captured four times after that, and if the mimba had been made of gold, it might not still be here today. Sinan's legacy can be found all over Turkey, preserved and celebrated in the magnificent buildings that still remain. But the Selimia, as Sinan claimed himself, was the masterpiece of them all, completed when Sinan was 90 years old. For hundreds of years, his buildings have defined the nature of Ottoman architecture. But mosques were not all that Sinan built. Stay tuned for the next episode of Islam in Anatolia to discover the extraordinary world of the Ottoman bazaars and trade routes. Only here on The Truth.